Praise the Lord. It's my joy to be here. I truly want to honor Pastor Yami David. Let's honor him and his dear wife and all the leaders here. I also want us to honor a dear man of God, precious, precious. Many people are godly, but very few people are good. Truly, I want you to know that um, I had a conversation with your pastor. Um, I remember it was in Abelkota. We spent quite some time into the night just talking about issues. And I said, this man is not only a godly man, he truly is a good man. Thank you, sir. I honor you. Thank you. And then please help me honor Pastor Shola. Thank you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Before we sit down, you know, when I saw the caliber of ministers that were going to be ministering in this conference, my only prayer was, oh God, let your people truly receive. That was my only prayer because truly speaking, the kind of people that your pastor um, allowed to stand on this altar to minister, they are people who truly carry something. And they are not just people who are noisemakers. I was privileged to participate in Reverend Sam's The Last Moment, The Prophecy. And I was just nodding my head and praying and saying, Oh God, let your people receive. The first key to receiving is discernment. Faith is a derivative of discernment. An understanding of who is talking to you in the spirit. Paul said, we know we know man after the flesh. The flesh by nature is deceptive. It cannot reveal the true identity of a man. But when you see from the spirit, then you can know that the body is only a tray carrying something. You have to look beyond it and then you will see the substance of what has been communicated. Praise the Lord. And I pray that within the few minutes we have to share together this afternoon that God will grant us grace. We have tarried here. I love meetings like this. You know, while your pastor was speaking, I was just, I felt like coming up to just hug him. Our generation is very distracted and we need to trust God for the grace to be focused on the things that really matter. Most of the things we are distracted seeking are the things we only find when we are focused. Praise the Lord. And so meetings like this, I know that this is a very cosmopolitan city. This is, there's, there's a lot going on. But sometimes you just need to, the key to speed is to wait. We're going to pray. I'm, I'm just greeting. It's important for us to know Truly speaking, many times the key to speed is not to hurry. There are two different things. That you hurry does not mean you have speed. They went six hours ahead of Jesus and he stayed quietly to pray. You would think it was delay, but watch him walk on water. And within a, a short time he had caught up with them. And performed a miracle. Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. So sometimes when we stay, it's not a proof of weakness. All of the money you would have been making in your shop from morning till now is nothing compared to what one key. You see, a key is very small. It can enter your pocket, but it can stop you from entering a door bigger than you. As small as that key is, you can put it in your pocket. But you lose that key and you stand before a giant door from morning till night at the mercy of a key that sometimes is very irrelevant. And the key that opens your kitchen is not the key that opens your bathroom. The key that opens your bedroom may not be the key that opens your store. If you are hungry and the only key you have is the key to your restroom, you are not free with respect to your need. Keys are not generic. They are specific. And the dynamics of their operations differ. 
So it's important that you obtain as many keys. Your dominion in that house depends on the versatility, the keys, not a key. You may have the key to the living room. Wonderful if all you have to do resides within the living room. But when you are thirsty, you need another key that may not open the way the key to your living room opens. They are called keys, but the dynamics of their operation differ. God is already speaking to someone. Let's hold hands together and pray in the spirit in one minute. Trust in God for the spirit of revelation once again. It's called recharge. We bless you. Lift your voice and let's pray. Shabrandas kabaro tu shiprahas kede balatos. Onde zati shala has kabrandi gidi baratu shabratis kebar. Kabro zega bosh kanda bratis kalabra ati sevish. Please pray. The flesh may be tired, but it's an investment that will save decades of mistakes. Said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting will appear unto all. Shabraus kabaruda shada brendege de balaka tabra hasile geteba. Kante prato zate karu shata pra atsegedesh. Mighty God. Shegros kabarunda shala brandes kabaruta shada brigeti balatasia. Hallelujah. Speak to us, O oh God. Cause our hearts to hear. We mean business with you. We are not pretending. We are not acting. Our destinies are at the mercy of your word. Explain it to us. Take away ignorance from our lives. Let our results be clear. Let it be that we have met you. We cry for the spirit of wisdom. Like the Magi, we continue to follow your light until we find that which our hearts cry for. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have a few minutes this afternoon and um, I truly want to share something that I believe with all my heart building on the many things that the great, great servants of God have shared upon this altar here and in all of your campuses. And um, please, I want you, like Pastor said, to pay attention to these things. It's one thing to hear, but it's another thing to listen. You don't listen with your ears. You listen with your mind. The ears can hear sounds and forget. But the mind is the instrument designed to capture truth. And it's important that we sustain the ability to hear. Praise the Lord. Success and greatness in life is never, has never, and will never be a coincidence. Please pay attention. We all desire success. We admire men and women who we see around our world in business, in ministry, politics, career, and so on and so forth. And when we see these people exhibit flawless dimensions of success, usually we admire their results and we desire it sincerely. But then I have observed something that I would want to start teaching, um, just noticing and noting and correcting. Truth in itself will not automatically free you. Truth only frees you when it is sequentially arranged. Please listen. Please listen. I believe, and, and, and I've said it again and again, Pastor, that the major challenge with the body of Christ is not ignorance. I do not believe we're in ignorance. By the grace of God, God has used mighty men and women within this city and around the world to, in a very 
commendable measure correct this ignorance but the challenge with the body of Christ largely number one is imbalance but number two random application of truth there is no sequence to our spiritual understanding that means that the average believer is already fortified with the arsenals for victory but we seldom understand the dynamics of operating which so we just know that in the equation of success somewhere the blood of Jesus is needed somewhere the name of Jesus is needed somewhere prophecy is needed somewhere diligence and hard work is needed are we together somewhere relationships are needed but at what point they are needed and to what degree they are needed we do not know so our application of truth is largely random so our results are not predictable because we have not attained a point of mastery where we understand truth alongside the jurisdiction of their relevance is God speaking to us yes so we have people who just randomly apply anything that is true in the Bible and one of them will work and that's the worst thing that can happen to you to get results that you do not know how it happened because you will fear your result you know it will not last and truly it will not last anything not built by knowledge is dangerous it can not only destroy you it will destroy those who have come like the fig tree signs of victory in your life will compel others to come and then you do not sustain capacity to keep the results going it may not only destroy you it can destroy your children destroy your reputation etc so conferences like this are designed to bring us to a higher level of spiritual mastery so that not only are we reminded of what we already know but we are guided sequentially to understand what truth is responsible for what outcome between our desires and the results that we want there are mysteries and truths and keys that connect them and we must redeem time by minimizing guesswork in our Christian experience the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise are we together that one of the ways you redeem time is to work accurately that means I cannot spend five years learning how finances work it's too risky I rather redeem time by meeting an authority who will give me a formula that I will not interrupt it's amazing the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man perception seemeth right it's not right but it seems right and the trouble is it is only at the end you will know you are wrong now you imagine that level of wastage after 20 years of shadow boxing and guessing you will come to the sad conclusion that I missed it I started my journey from 1980 but I still missed it and the thing with life is the correction starts by going back you don't correct it where you are no matter how far you will go back join the queue and start again it is because of this reality that God introduced systems like favor, like mercy. So that when you find yourself on the way, you know going back 20 years, you've lost your entire life. So he introduces an agency to your life that can remedy for that constraint. Are we together? The goal of conferences like this is to do something to our understanding. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Can we have it projected? All right, beautiful. Please, let's, let's read together. One, two, read. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard, uh -huh, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with, number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom. Hold on, don't rush. All wisdom, not wisdom. All wisdom. That means that wisdom is dimensional. There are different dimensions of wisdom. Divine direction is a dimension of wisdom. Divine strategy is a dimension of wisdom. You can have certain dimensions, but he prays that you have all wisdom. And then number three, 
spiritual understanding. This is the apostle praying for the church in Colossae. That they be filled with all of these dimensions. Because he knew that being filled with these dimensions, they will now be able to rise in experience to the fullness of the measure of the stature of the Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'll just share with us a few things and then we'll pray. Am I boring you? Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 26. Let's start from verse 22. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 26. Verse 22. I'd like us to read and stop at the word day. Ready? One to read please. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. Men do not continue just because they want to continue. It's one thing to start, but there is a grace to continue. Remember, we are preparing for the remaining part of the year. It says, having therefore, please keep that scripture. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. That means if you see me standing after 20 years, something kept me. And he revealed that having therefore obtained help from God, not I start, I continue. It's very easy to start. It takes a desire, takes a little aggression to life and there you go. When you see people start marathon, many of you have watched people in a marathon, as soon as the whistle goes, you see a, a crowd of people, sometimes about the size of this place. I mean, everyone, some know already they will not finish. They are aware. Are we together? At least they should be rewarded for having the courage to start. They know, they are aware. They have convinced themselves. They did not intend to even go far. But then you find certain quiet people, skinny looking people, determined with a resolve. And then after a few minutes or hours, a separation begins from falling to collapsing to giving up. And then some people seem to be unperturbed by this reality that should happen to every man. Every man with flesh and blood should be tired somewhere. And there comes this one, two, or three guys. They continue moving. You greet them. They don't answer. They turn. They keep running. I mean, they run until they get to the finish line. And they stand as if they didn't run. Same men. Same situation. Same biological composition. And yet, some obtain the power. Am, am I blessing you? Yes. January is one of the most ambitious year in Niger months in Nigeria. It's full of anger from the failed year. And people come with, I mean, and during the prayer and fasting, you know, most churches do that. And people take this vendetta over life. And there are all kinds of resolution. I must make it, things must change. I'm tired of my finances. I must get a job. I must grow in ministry, etc., etc. And sometimes as early as March, Many people just say, December, come. Come fast. <laughs> Having obtained help from God, I continue until this day. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. We'll start from verse 28. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the maker of the ends of the earth fainted not, neither is he weary. Now, when the Bible begins to talk about this, it's because he's contrasting God to something, a man that is about to reveal something about. Are we together? So the Bible says that God does not faint, and then God cannot be weary, and that there is an understanding in him that makes that possible. There is no searching of his understanding. Next verse, please. 29 says, he giveth power to the faint. And then to them that have no might, he increased strength. The next, verse, the next verse, verse 30, it tells you something that happens to all men. How many men? It says, even the youth. Remember the Bible says, the glory of the youth is in their strength. 
So he says, even the youth shall faint, not may faint. And be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. That means by human strength, one day, this reality will catch up with you. It has nothing to do with backsliding. It has nothing to do with not being a Christian. It's a reality that is enshrined in this frail nature of men. Next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord. That means not everybody is interested in waiting. But for as many who will choose this strategy to wait upon the Lord, a number of things will begin to happen to them. Number one, renewal. Not just renewal of their mind, renewal of their strength. Strength can be renewed. And then he says that they shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They shall run, my God, look at this, and not be weary. Do you know what this means? That means that when I start my journey in life, please watch. It is, it is expected that at a point I should be tired. Is that true? I should be weary. I should faint. This is the law that governs men. But that there is a system in the spirit I can tap into pastor. That when others are failing, I will run and not faint. I will not be weary. Please keep that scripture for us. I will walk and I will not faint. That means that not all men faint. Not all men are weary. All men should faint. All men should be weary. Except that if you tap into a system in the kingdom, you will run and not be weary. You will not faint. Are we together now? He gives power to the faint. That means if you come to God and say, Lord, I'm fainting. He does not give you an advice. He knows what is wrong. Lack of strength, lack of power was what caused the fainting in the first place. If you ask me to lift these or a number of heavy gadgets, it is because of the limitation of the strength to lift it that will create fainting. I will not faint lifting a handkerchief, no matter how many times. Why? Because I sustain enough strength to lift it. So when God sees you fainting, your fainting is a message to him. Lord, no human, including me, can lift this by my strength. So he answers you by giving you power. He supplies something to your life so that what you could not lift yesterday, after a conference like this, you will lift it by an agency that men will say, no, this is not human. And you say, this is, this is me plus another dynamic. It was not normal for Samson to kill the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass, except that when the hand of the Lord came upon him, even the chains that was on him, the Bible says they were like wax before the fire. Are we together? The power of God is threefold. Please, let's, let's just pay attention to understand. Number one, there is the manifestation of God's power that is manifested on the strength of relationship. That means that the power is a derivative of your relationship with him. A dimension of his power comes from your relationship with him. Number two, there is a dimension of his power that is a derivative of understanding his laws. Please say after me, laws. Say principles. Say laws again. Say principles. So the second dimension of his power is routed through an understanding of his principles. You don't need a relationship with him to access that dimension of his power. It is still his power, but you can ignore him and still route that. Are we together? The third dimension of his power can be accessed when you come under a man who has a covenant with God. 
So that possibility will be activated in your life not by any making of your own. You are a derivative of the business a man had with God. God calls Abraham, didn't call Lot, and Lot went with him. So whatever happened to Abraham happened to Lot. And it Lot forgot that he was where he was, not because he understood anything. When he left Abraham, he went down till he got to Sodom. So there are things that God does for the sake of other people, not your sake. When you, you, you find yourself under that grace, there are many people before they knew anything about tithing and giving, they started getting blessed. They could not explain why. This is the third dimension. They, come under a, they came under a grace, for instance, that commanded favor in strange ways. And although their knowledge was unfruitful in that area, they started experiencing strange favor. It was later on why they were teaching. They said, ah, these are the kinds of people that say there's no need to learn anything. Because whether they learn or not, their results don't seem to change. They just seem to go up and they don't know what technology is responsible for their rising. Mm. Are we together? Yes. But now I want to focus on number two. Because that's the one that largely controls your individual success. Your relationship with God is very important. But many of us have not truly understood the laws of the kingdom that were built to produce the kinds of results that we desire. There is a name that God is called that I want to introduce. He's called the God of Systems. That means that he operates through systems. In the Bible, you would hardly find God do anything twice the same way. The pattern of his operation is that when he comes to do a thing once, he creates a model of it and then a system within it. Are we together? So that by accessing the system, you can reproduce the results again and again and again please say the God of systems so he only had to create and make man and woman once and put within that technology a system are we together yes that means that you you do not need to pray and fast as a woman to be pregnant or as a man to get your wife pregnant if that does not happen, someone is interrupting a system because the system was designed to work. Are we together now? That's the reason why it calls for God's attention because God says, who is violating a system? I designed a system that a man and a woman should be able to have children effortlessly. What is corrupting the system? That's why it calls for prayer. That's why it calls for attention. Growth. When you have your child and after two, three, four years, that child is not growing. is an aberration to the system because growth is something that was programmed in God's system. Are we together now? Success is also systemic. That means that there are a combination of laws that if diligently adhered to, regardless of the background and regardless of the prevailing circumstances, you will be able to step into your predestined place. And this is where I'm praying that God will shift us in experience. Amen. That we'll stop seeing things only in visions and dreams. But that our visions and dreams will find expression. We will walk in the experience. The end of faith is a manifestation. That you obtain it. Are we together? Systems. When I found this dimension of God, it gave me rest. It brought predictability to my life. Are we together now? God designed systems as a proof that he is just. So there's no bias. That means that he leaves us to determine the cause of our destinies and the extent to which we can go far. 
If I fail in life and if you fail in life, God is not to be blamed. The problem usually will be a thorough understanding of the systems of the kingdom. And let me tell you this, please. Precious people of God. You may have heard me say it in different platforms again and again. That when it comes to the knowledge of God and our spiritual growth. There is no end to how much we can know about God. Even in heaven, we will continue to come up hither. Come up hither. As we see dimensions of him unfold. But as far as our victory and dominion in the earth is concerned. There is an exact body of knowledge allocated for our victory. Like a curriculum, you can exhaust it and know I've held the keys. Away with that idea that the things you have to learn to succeed are infinite. It's not true. There is an exact body of truth that you can hold on to and tame life like an animal. Praise the Lord. The reason why many believers fail is because we have this illusion that there are infinite laws to learn. And you are wondering, at what point will I exhaust it? God would not be that heartless. There is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints. And that it is possible that a man can hold the keys with all humility. Now, you look at the life of a student in school. Learning does not stop. But the curriculum to graduate him is finite. He can finish it and his certificate is given to him. Now you continue to learn but as far as that body of knowledge is concerned, you've been accredited. This is how it is with life. You can hold on the keys and step out with boldness and stand and look at the mountain of finances and it goes down. And your influence multiplies. And the Lord continues to bless you. And like Abraham, you are old and well stricken in age. And God would have blessed you in all things. How many things? All things. I love your pastor. I read, I read a little about the church. And immediately I got connected to the passion for all round excellence. To be able to provide balance and victory in every area. I told myself I will never lead a people who are spiritually sound. And then will continue to fail in every other area of their lives. And then at the same time I would not lead a people who are ambitious. And will prosper only in the earth realm at the expense of the salvation of their soul. You don't have to choose any. You can take all. Are we together now? It's very important. So God is a God of systems. That's a revelation that we must get. The systemic nature of his operation can make your life predictable. That means regardless of background, when you know what God has allocated. See, let me tell you this, my, my precious people of God. Creation has truly never been disobedient. It was only designed to respect laws. That means that every time we act not in accordance to the laws prescribed, their refusal is a message to us that you are sending something wrong to us. Are we together now? Yes. There are people, for instance, who have been born and bred in this city and have never had the opportunity to be blessed and to prosper. And yet there are others who, as at last year, there was no hope for them. But then they stumbled across these laws and today they stand to glorify the name of the Lord with evidences that prove that creation is still obedient. Are we together? If I desire sustainable growth, if I desire increase, oh, I forgot to tell you that the only kind of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every kind of growth is engineered is primed you don't grow intellectually by default you don't grow spiritually by default a foolish man continues to grow biologically a wise man continues to grow biologically are we together now yes he only turns from a foolish child to a foolish adult but the growth still happens or a wise child to a wise adult the growth still happens but when it has to do with growth in every other area of your life it is based on the understanding Understanding is a miracle that we must desire. 
one of the greatest miracles that's why when jesus saw mad men he was touched by their situation because in my opinion the worst situation that can happen to a man is madness There are people today blind who are doing great things. There are people without limbs who are doing great things. But I'm not aware of any madman. Madness is a real issue. When Jesus saw it, he didn't let it go. The madman in Gadara had potential to bring 10 cities to Jesus. And one plague over his mind. And he kept that man forever. The miracle of understanding is a real miracle. The Bible says, then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Next time you are listing all the miracles in the Bible, leave the issue of bread. Leave the issue of wine. Go to understanding. You are truly, truly blessed and lifted when you have understanding. Let me share just one or two keys and then we'll pray and then we can continue tomorrow. Is the Lord blessing you? Yes, Understanding. Amen and amen. Psalm 18. We'll read 28 and 29. Psalm 18. Jesus, we bless you. It's projected. Please let's read together. One to read. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. As a result, 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. The problem is not the troop. The problem is not the wall. It says that you will light my candle. Was it not Job that showed us the secrets of his exploits? He said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, then he began to list all the exploits that happened on account of that. Spiritual illumination is real power. Remember the Bible says he gives power to the faint. I want you to know how the power comes. Because for many people when we think power, we just think power, fall down, stand up. That's wonderful. But that light in the kingdom is true power. Spiritual illumination is power that when God supplies a miracle of information in your understanding, it can take you from where you are and take you to a dimension you never thought possible. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Circumstances keep you until light comes to bail you out. Light is powerful. You switch off the light in this entire place and it becomes dark, surprisingly dark. But you introduce that light and things begin to change. Let me tell you this. You know the area of darkness in your life by the difficulty that surrounds that area. Light was designed to bring ease because whoever has light does not stumble. Stumbling is a proof of darkness. When there is difficulty in ministry, something is wrong. When there is difficulty in finances, something is wrong. When there is difficulty in your influence, your business, whatever it is. Now, it takes a lot of meekness to admit it. Especially if you have results in other areas. It's usually easier if you, are, you completely fail in every area. But once you have some results. The Bible says there was a man, a captain of the Syrian army. Naaman was called. A valiant man at war. But the Bible says, but he had light when it had to do with warfare. But when it had to do with his wholeness, there was something wrong. And one day, a slave girl decided to put this man's ego under pressure. Mr. Man, although you are a warrior, you are only a warrior in battle. And sorry, there is no fight. So now you will have to join the queue and learn what it takes to also succeed in the other areas you need. 
And when Elisha gave him an instruction, he said, what kind of embarrassment is this? There are other rivers. Don't, I mean, I'm a warrior here. The greatest enemy to your success is the last one you had. Failure is the key to success. Success is the key to failure. It is true. Mismanaged success is the key to failure. The fastest way to fail is to succeed and not understand the dynamics of maintaining it. Let me tell you this. As easy as being successful is, the easiest part of it is becoming it. Maintaining success is 10 times harder than getting successful. The dynamics in that realm is very complicated. You will need help. Having obtained help from God, I continue to this day. Light, light, exact light, spiritual illumination that is responsible for your victory. Are we together now? Please let me have three or four gentlemen. Any persons? Okay, let me use the guys. Please come stand here. Thank you. Now everyone, please watch. Let these guys represent the various areas of our lives where we are trusting God to come through. Let this, my brother here, represent your finances. Say finances, please. Ah, Nigerians. Say finances, oh. <laughs> Let this be your career, say. Are we together? Thank you. Let this be your spiritual life. Are we together? And then let this be what? Health and wellness. Are we together? Now watch this. In the economy of God, there is provision for you to excel in all of these areas. Are we together? But connecting you and any area is a light. I call it a mystery. Matthew 13 and verse 11. Jesus was speaking and he said, It has been given unto you to know. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Not just to be aware that they are there. But to become one with them. Such that your life can prove their validity. Are we together now? So I want to excel financially. And then I do whatever I was told to do. And this thing does not answer. And it's amazing that while you are suffering, another person is just rising as if the devil does not exist. And you exhaust all your knowledge. You are stranded. You need light. Are we together? It takes a long time. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 encourages us to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You see, it takes meekness, humility, a recognition that learning is not a cause. You have to come to a point where you are not embarrassed by your ignorance. Be, be a learner. It's all right when I find out that I do not know because I can know. Growth is something that is a miracle in men. That means something I did not know yesterday, I can know tomorrow. And while you are laughing at the yesterday version of me, I have evolved to something else. I know that the yesterday version of me could not pay rent except that between yesterday and tomorrow something happened to my today. I came for a conference and then the spirit of the living God through his word did something to my understanding and I can walk into tomorrow as though it was not the me of yesterday. Can the yesterday of you clap for the tomorrow of you and say well done you have changed or can he say you look exactly like me in fact you are a mirror. That's a shame. When your tomorrow becomes like your yesterday, you are filled. I should be able to evolve so much that there should be such a gap between the yesterday version of me and tomorrow. And the bridge is light. The bridge is light. The mystery by which ordinary men can transit to become signs and wonders. Light. Not clothes, light, not phones, light, not laptops, light, not cars. Mm -mm. Are we together now? Now, I want to be very sincere with us. There's no point wasting our time. If I ask all of us to submit our requests now, our requests are a revelation largely of the areas of darkness in our lives. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's so. 
And we must be able to humble ourselves to say, Lord, I thank you for that which you have shown me. But my eyes need to see something else. To rise higher. I look at my life today and I'm, I'm surprised at the level of darkness that I used to operate in. Limited knowledge. Constructed by culture. Constructed by well-meaning believers who are mediocres. And I adopted those philosophies to my detriment. And when I saw by God's spirit that the future version of me would require a lot of evolution, I cried to God. I said, Lord, you have to do something. As you are sitting down right here, you are changing, you see. It's the truth. Let me tell you this. You never pursue success. Let me say it again. You never pursue success. It was not designed to be pursued. Whether success, money, whatever it is. You never, if you seek it, you will never. You don't pursue success. Every dimension, please look up. Life is dimensional. And in God's technology, he allocated possibilities for every dimension. That means that your life becomes a reflection of the possibilities that suit your dimension. The way you, you attract things is by evolving to a higher version of you. And then the possibilities that were allocated for that realm will come to you. Listen, you don't pursue success. They were designed with a code to find various versions of you. So every time they come, they reject you because the version of you that should keep them is not the one they find. Please listen to what I'm saying. Every result you want was already written for a version of you. Most of the results that come to your life find a lower version of you and they were not designed to honor it. This is God's integrity. So they continue to retreat. Sometimes you get them by force. And they were designed to leave you. This is the mystery behind good things, leaving people. It's not always demonic. Leaving you is proof that there is need for an upgrade. It's amazing how what you used to look for tomorrow can come to you now. Because you have risen to the version that makes it happen. There are people who desire growth and that growth happens by transformation. But most of them will not subscribe to the discipline of transformation. Yet the pressure, the ego will compel them to continue to acquire things around their life. And then you find out that they continue to lose it. Are we together? It is true that your business can scale, but not by this version of you. Not by this version of your understanding. It is true that your ministry can be global. But not by this version of you. Not this level of anointing. No. This level of anointing cannot sponsor a global ministry. And so you will need like currency more of the same thing. 1,000 naira can buy a plate of food, not a car. So I hold 1,000 and Ote dollar holds billions. And I convince myself that we are both holding money. Life will soon tell us that the amount matters. How God anointed Jesus. Not that he was anointed. Look at the extent. Is God speaking to us this afternoon? So I, I, I came here to really shake us and challenge us. What area in your life has refused to bow to the Lordship of Christ? That is the area you need to cry for light. There is a dimension of light. Lord, why do I come to seek favor? I've heard pastor talk about favor. I've seen people come into Lagos and within five months their lives change. I was born and bred in this city. Not me, not my father, not my mother. Nothing is changing. Favor is still real. Your experience is too small to prove otherwise. So when the dynamics of it comes to you, then you learn. And then suddenly, Lagos starts to respond to the version of you they have been waiting for. There is nothing that should come to you that is missing. Stop looking for it. Uh -uh. A code was programmed in it by God's intelligence to come to the version of you that calls it. 
every dimension you rise to has a voice. It will call the possibilities that were sent to that dimension. Ask any great man you know, there are things they never prayed for. They didn't even know that those are the possibilities that come with certain realms. They paid attention evolving. And the moment they began to evolve, certain things started running away from their life. It was reacting to their growth and it left. Made way for something else to come. I, I started from the office there. I was hearing um, Ephenathan, amazing worshiper. You know, when she was worshiping, I just nodded my head and said, ah, but men are not all the same. Oh. We, have this, we have to humble ourselves and admit this. The, the investment and the sacrifice to build understanding and build mastery, it distinguishes you. Your pastor is where he is, not just because God called him. Let me tell you, the call of God is not the license to success. You can still fail. There were people in the Bible God did not call. They succeeded. <laughs> you go and read your Bible. Elisha, there was no prophecy about him. Elisha was a farmer. He was not a prophet. But he subscribed to the law of mentorship until he carried the mantle. And other people like Moses, your Moses, didn't enter the promised land. The call of God is not an automatic ticket for success. You, even if you see Jesus, you will still bend to the reality of the principles that make for success. When Jesus appeared to Saul, he said, I'm done. I recommend you back. Go and continue to learn. From there, he would go to the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Even Jesus, the word himself, went to the temple to learn about himself again. He went to learn Jesus the way. Is God helping us? So I look at my life and I love the Lord so much. But why is my family like this? Why is the ministry like this? I open a business and no one is coming and I love God. Remember, as we say, I want to grow so that I will bless the house of God. Sincere desire, but not even the desire itself will automatically bring blessings. God is the God of systems. Please understand this. This is the name of God I want you to know and understand today. Systems. He came to listen to the prayer and the sacrifice of both Cain and Abel. Did you know that God attended to both of them unbiasedly? But at the end of it, one subscribed to a system, a pattern, and it was received. So God came. It looked like he did not come. If you did not hear of the episode of what happened from God's side, you would think God ignored one. But he came to see both. He was not looking for men. He was looking for patterns. When he found his pattern, he honored it immediately. The same way your prosperity is not looking for you, it's looking for obedience to patterns. And if you are the one who has it, it will look like it's coming to you. The systemic nature of life is very powerful. When I learned this, I told myself, regardless of my background, I'm grateful because I can find my way out. Imagine that I had to just depend on the emotions of men. Some of us will never rise. But the God of heaven who programmed this system. The same way you are sitting now. Forget about what is in your pocket or not in your pocket. Forget about who knows you or not. If you pay attention and light takes you from your yesterday through your today into your tomorrow. You will turn back and say my God. I've heard people saying that you can change men. But this is true. And usually people will say, you are lucky. Oh. You mean that church just changed you? You just came and in two months you are changed. No. Growth happens through understanding. Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Through knowledge. Through knowledge. Exact understanding. So I decided to compartmentalize my life into all the dimensions that I know would be required for my excelling and my living an impactful life. And I started to pursue exact knowledge. I don't just want to pursue random spiritual growth. Just reading the Bible anyhow. You just open today and say, Kai, I feel like reading Exodus. Now, you are, you are doing the same thing that a student does by hopping to any faculty at all. And says, no knowledge is a waste. 
Imagine that you hop to just anywhere and say, after all, I'm, I'm still learning. Yes, you are learning. But your knowledge is not guided and it's not specific. So it cannot make any noticeable impact. Are we together? There is one thing that you can know, please hear me, and never beg for bread again until Jesus comes. There is one thing you can know and it will look as if there is a charm on men every time they see you. These are possibilities. Let God be true. And let every man, let every culture, let every background, let every situation, let every mountain be a liar. There is something your business can have and know and do. People of God, that what you see now that you call success will be what those you raise will be doing. Because you will scale to a height unimagined. Do not peg yourself and plateau at a level and convince yourself this is all there is. No. I came to challenge you. It is the power of light. When you faint, it's proof that there is weakness somewhere. And much more than just an impartation, he sends light first. An impartation is useless when your understanding is barren. Remember the oil assumes the shape of the container. If you turn the container this way, the oil will look like it's pouring. If you keep the container up, the oil will look secured. The oil is there with its potential, but the container controls what it does. When your capacity is small, impartation becomes almost unfruitful. That's why people fall down and stand up again and again and return back. Because your container was almost pouring and as you were putting the oil, it still came out. But when God expands you and then that grace comes on your life, it will be like the foxes of Samson. You will say, where is that challenge that brought shame to me yesterday? I'm not praying that you go. By you, I will leap over walls. And you look at it and greet your landlord and say, sir, thank you so much for driving me. I, would you be available for my Thanksgiving? Say, Thanksgiving of what? You gave birth to a child? Say, no, 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 I just finished my estate. In how many months? Five. He said, you are a thief. You've started. I'm not a thief. Light. Light is not a ladder. It's a lift. It can take you to dimensions unimagined. Let me tell you this. Time never changes anything. One day, go better is just a wise saying to comfort you. It will never work. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. When you have an encounter with the light of God and you embrace it, then things will turn around in your life. Are we together? There are so many laws. I don't know if I'll have the time to share them. But the Lord shared with me a number of spiritual laws. And I have learned it from the power of uncommon mentorship. These are the laws that manipulate life like you are playing a chess. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, life does not honor bold face. All these one, no, get the thing. Don't get it once and for all. Prophesy to your neighbor, say, get it once and for all. I know God has called me to be a great prophet of God. When you keep guessing prophecy, one day you will go wrong. And the day you go wrong, it will be that you are prophesying to a mopo. And then you will go wrong. And the man will say, up from the service, I'm waiting for you outside. Why fake what can be real? I carry favor. I carry favor. No, if you have to say it, it's not there. Favor is so loud, even a deaf man will know it's working. Everybody loves me. What is the proof? If only your tribal people love you, you are not favored. No. All men seek for thee. All, 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 all. Regardless of territorial limitations. There is a grace. Is God helping us? I'm saying this because in the name of Jesus in this conference, these graces must land upon someone's life. 
that you will walk out of this place and it will be like pastor shared a charm. As soon as you step out, someone who forgot you. Listen, ringing people's phone to say remember me is the worst way to command favor. You will never get it that way. You become a nuisance till they block your line. There is a name God is called, the father of spirits. I believe this. I stand by the message of God to tell you this man standing before you is a testimony of these things I speak. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life. You are not being taught cunningly devised fables. I usually insist that I become the first guinea pig to any revelation I receive from God. If it does not work in my life, I suspend it. I teach by conviction. That's why I don't teach everything. If you pay attention, your pastor brought you here to truly shift your life. And I want you to believe it. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence. I know that there are many of us that God has helped. But is that all? Even in heaven, he said, come up here. Come up here and I will show you the version of you you have not seen. Apostle, but I'm rich. How rich? Let me tell you, you are only rich when any amount you give doesn't affect you. If you've not gotten to that realm, you are not there yet. You are not rich when you have comfort. You are not rich when you fly first class. You are not rich when you have a flourishing business. When you can invest no matter what to turn a man's life around and commit to the purposes of the kingdom and it has no effect in you, you have entered the wealthy place. Are you there? Apostle, but I'm anointed to what degree? You prayed for 50 people, only two God healed? Mark yourself. What score is that? Listen, this conference is for people who are dissatisfied with where they are. People who know that, thank God for what you have done yesterday, but Lord, there has to be more. There has to be more. Are we together? Let me tell you this. I love a lot of people, but you never see me close to people who do not have a hunger for more. Once I see a sign of complacency, I love you, but you will not see me near you again. Because, not because I hate you, it will affect me. There is a generation waiting for the other version of you and be selfless enough to pay the price to rise there. This version of you have done so far, but what of, do you know, while you rise slowly, people are dying who you should save. Must your mother die before you learn the principles of increase? The woman labored for you. If you wait till you understand the loss of wealth for the next 10 years, why wait that far? Is it that hard? You were told by mediocres it's that hard. But come to the technology of the spirit where there is exactitude. You can learn these things and know them. Thank God for your pastor. Be careful who you listen to. Sincerity is not the only key for change. Correctness of information is. You can listen to a well-meaning person who is a victim of his own reality. It is dangerous to turn experiences into doctrines. If I buy my first car at 45, I can build a theology around my pain and lack of favor to mean if you are blessed at 21 is a lie. I introduce to you God's system where any man is no respecter of person, you can sit today and choose that by August, my church, my business, you can choose today that there are things I will wave goodbye in this conference and they have to wave me back. That these Egyptians I see today, I will see no more. Is God speaking to us? How long will it take before that anointing comes on your life? You continue to see people cry every night. It's called a global impact church. Not a Lagos impact church. You continue to see people there. The last meeting they invited you.
They sent you away as if it was a funeral. No one was healed. No one was blessed. Every word of knowledge was wrong. The scriptures were wrong. You forgot what you studied. Come on, go and sit down. Get something of substance. Don't give excuses and say the people didn't have faith. Have you ever seen doctors complain about patients? There are even patients who are in ICU. Why then are you a doctor? I'm not shouting at you. I hope you understand. There has to be some way of shaking you. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. I share your pastor's burden. That a fire will come upon you. That something will come upon you. You will go back and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, have you forgotten about yesterday? He said, I'm not in yesterday. The yesterday version was the defeated one. And you say, Goliath, let me even tell you how you will fall first before I start. The stone will hit you down and will remove your head and give it to the birds. And Goliath will reply and say, am I a dog? I hope you know that Ramesses, who later became the Pharaoh, was a half-brother of Moses. That was Moses' position. It was because Moses ran away. So when Moses came to Ramesses, Ramesses said, ah, bros, we know ourselves. We played together, we laughed together. Moses said, no. The Moses you played with changed in the burning bush. The difference between the yesterday Moses and the tomorrow Moses was a light bush. The bush burnt and burnt everything. I, I know I'm speaking to someone here. That in the name that is above all names, they may laugh at you and they may see you and think nothing good will come out of you. But in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, you will receive an unction from the Holy One that will turn your life around. Please sit down. We're going to pray. I found out in this scripture, verily, verily, Whoever believes in me, the works that I do, he shall also do. I believed it. I found in this scripture, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, 1 and 2. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. When I saw it, I believed it. That young boy who was lying down somewhere, I said, I saw a scripture that changed my life. He said, Abraham, from where you are, lift up your eyes. So I can lift up my eyes from where I am. I don't need to climb a plane to lift my eyes. I can stand in my city and lift up my eyes. And I will still see. From any city in the world, when you look up, you see the stars. When it has to do with the stars, where you live is not a disadvantage. So I lifted up my eyes from where I was. that you will know what to do like Jesus. You will go back and knock on the door of finance and say, I'm no longer begging you. I found the keys. And you will swing open those gates. And all of a sudden, you will begin to see the blessings of the Lord. Then you will understand that the testimonies you hear are not a lie. You see, when you, when you are used to pain, you will get angry when people are testifying because you will think it's too real. They are lying. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said we were like them that dream. We are like them that dream. That the songs we sing as special numbers will become our experience. Ah. That you've heard people tell somebody, stand up and go and bless or not. You've only heard it as a testimony. But now you will be a partaker of it. That you are sitting in your house and prepared blessings come to you. And you don't just laugh and people say you are lucky. Oh, but you know you are operating by keys. And regardless of where you go, it will work. That now you can scale your business. It may not be the devil that stopped you from scaling your business. Let me tell you. It may be that God already knew that this version of you and the version of understanding you have. Scaling your business will be the worst thing that would happen to you. So he delayed you as an act of his love to minimize wastage in your life until the required light comes. 
So after this conference, he can tell you, now you can go. And then you take over Lagos, like Reverend Sam prophesied to you. Men do not rise by mistake. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. You can go to the stadium by mistake, but you don't win by mistake. It's time for us to be intentional over our results. I'm bringing you to a level of quintessence in the spirit where we stop shadow boxing, guessing things. What is the principle for restoration? Do you know it? What is the principle for favor? I know favor just happens. No, sir. Then you will never see it. What is the principle? When I'm in trouble, what do I engage to come out? Because I live in a wicked world. What if my boss hates me and vows that for as long as you're a member of Global Impact Church, I will frustrate you here? Ah! Do you know the ordinances that you can engage is it not in your Bible that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that he makes even his enemy? But it's not under, you see, when the Bible talks, it talks prophetically. You need the eyes of the Spirit to x ray what was said and see where you play the role that you have to play. Otherwise, we'll continue to quote scriptures to our detriment. When you watch a professional drive, there are many things you are looking at that you are not seeing. You don't even see when he changes the gear, when he initiates the trafficator and the rest. Then he gives you the whole thing. And you find out there are many things to be done. And yet you are just with him. It's called mastery. Please hear me. The church that Jesus is returning back to get is not a weak church that has been beaten by life. And then we scrounge our way out. Escapism is not the doctrine we were given. We are given victory. The Bible says, and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Are we together? That you must insist. I'm going to be praying shortly. But you must insist. Lord, this cannot be it. This cannot be it. Thank you for what you have done. But this, I know there is more. I confess my ignorance. I've not taught you any exact principles now. We'll deal with that. There's no time for it now. You've, you've, been, you've come here since morning. So our next time we'll take specifics and just end some of these things in our lives. Why do men hate me? Why is it that I love the Lord with all my heart? But every time I come to men, I cannot get their help. No helper helps by himself. There is something that makes them help us. Every man is a man until the mysteries of the kingdom turn them to help us. If you call men, you will never get anything. But if you call helpers, they will come. If you're in ministry here and you came for this conference, please listen. Ministry will never grow just because you have your tribesmen around you. Their solidarity is too small to make you global. You need an understanding that takes you far. When men of other nations call on you and call on your God, when there is a clarion call, a Macedonian call, it is because the hand of the Lord is upon you. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. With me is riches, wealth, and honor, yet durable riches. When your children become small and they are mediocres, it is not their state. Listen, it is not even your not being educated. It's not true. Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says, wealth and riches shall be in his house, yet his righteousness endures forever. Is that true in your life? Or is it just a devotional? That you shall call upon a man and a nation will answer you. Is it true? Do you believe that? Do you believe that in one day Zion can be born? Is it not in your Bible? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof? Is it alright if we honor Pastor Amos Fenwa? God bless you. Hallelujah. 
You are the mighty God. Ain't I told you true? You are the glorious God. I love my You are the mighty God. Ain't I told you true? You are the glorious God. Please listen. Everyone in this place, I want you to know is God's desire to take you to a higher dimension. But that growth must be intentional. Growth must be engaged through light. Light is powerful. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness comprehended it not. If I want my life to change, it takes more than good intention. It even takes more than just being a Christian casually. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. It's one thing to know God, but it's another thing to enter into the experience. I don't know if I've succeeded in making someone angry this afternoon to say this level I am now I've exhausted it when a baby spends more than nine months in the womb it's a call for concern two years is demonic even ten months is demonic they outsource a process of removing that baby by force it's called CS in other words young man you are coming out you have encompassed this mountain long enough it's time for you to move Listen to me. Some of you have buried your challenges and you have even said, can God make a way in the wilderness? To the point that every time you pray and you ask the Lord to do things, you don't even add those issues. As far as the blessing of the Lord is concerned, Lord, just do whatever you want to do. Supported by a sincere but wrong theology that regardless of what it is, God is the doer of everything. There are all kinds of well-meaning but destructive theology that are usually the product of pride when you do not outsource intelligence from a realm higher than yours. That means if it must be known by me, it must be revealed to me. If it's revealed to another. And let me tell you this. Lack of finance can destroy and destroy your spiritual life more than you know. I always teach that finance is not about money. It's about time redemption. It's a cost to spend your life looking for money. You will never, it takes time to know God. And it takes time to be impactful. It takes time to build understanding. Pursuing money all your life is a cost. God cannot design a system like that. We have built, some of you here have schools. And you build the curriculum with such intelligence. How will God design a system where a man comes and all he does in his life is just trying to? And you know, every time you pretend that finance is not important, you implicate your destiny. Let me show you one scripture. Is that all right if I show you? Genesis chapter 42. Mm. And then we'll pray. Genesis chapter 42. Please give me volume, Mike. Let's start from verse 1. Please read with me if you're a Christian. It's projected. Ready? One to read. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Stop. I've heard that there's corn where? There is a technology with which Satan takes men to Egypt. He keeps corn in Egypt. And even if you are a prophet, you must go to Egypt to eat corn and become a slave in Egypt. Hunger is the authorized channel for leading men to Egypt. Corn. He said, get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live help me please and not die without corn you would die and the devil ensures that there is famine in the land and corn only in Egypt 
a prophet was hungry and he sent his future to Egypt to look for corn. Prophets can be hungry. If you don't master the art of this corn and wine, you must go to Egypt. Corn has taken many people to Egypt, pastor. Corn has relocated people out of God's will. Corn has made Nigerians to smuggle their way from Nigeria through Chad, through this, down. I mean, you see what people go through in search for corn. Corn has brought people into all kinds of things that should not be. But the Bible says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. In his house. When it was time to do the miracle, he didn't tell the widow of Zarephath, go somewhere. He said, I want to bring that miracle in your house. In your house. Please hear me. Everything God told you in his word is real. God does not scam people. Between his promises and performance and mysteries and lights that you must know. And failure to know it will keep you quoting scripture till you die. Quoting scripture is important but it's only a key. One key may not open all doors. Please hear me. We're going to pray. I trust God that what I've shared with you would have challenged you. That in the course of this conference and as other speakers continue to come and build on this, you will make up your mind. I may not know what the solution is, but one thing I know is I must get out of this situation now. There is an insistence that must come. My church must grow. Lord, it is to your glory. My business must grow. Lord, it is to your glory. I can't be paying the school fees of my child and is returning back with an evil report. There are reports called evil reports. The spies came with it. It's an evil report. God himself said it. Every other thing is increasing except your salary. Bills increasing. Everything increasing. And you get to a point where you cannot pray again. The last thing you remember saying is in Jesus' name. And worry continues the prayer. You walk up and down a house. How do I rent this hall now? Your wife says, honey, say, if you call me that name again. You were not like that. Egypt is doing something to you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You are going to pray. People are depressed. Have you seen people who talk to themselves alone in the car? No traffic until they go and die. I mean, you kick your car and drive yourself to a tree. In life, is this how things will be? How old am I that I'm depressed? And before you know it, you are in the hospital. I reject that for anybody here. High blood pressure used to be something for older people. People after 50. Now you see someone, some of you are doctors here. 2021. You measure his BP and you say, what are you thinking about? Say, doctor, if you know what is on this head as you are seeing me. I started fending for my family from age 15. Why wouldn't I have high blood pressure? Do you think you can be a pastor under that condition? No, sir. Ask any man of God here to prepare a sermon takes time. And that time will only come when some things are settled. Let's not tell ourselves the truth. The, uh, let's, let's, let's not lie to ourselves. Are we together? Mm. So every time Satan manipulates the economy, something is happening. Like many of you now, joyless people all around. Not because they were like that. You, know how, you want to know how people really are? See them when they are old. You now say, Daddy, why were you angry all through in your youth? I mean, you're a happy man. He said, I started happy. I'm ending happy. Something happened on the way. This anger was not my making. This is what God is correcting. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what he's correcting. Don't mind ignorant people that tell you don't focus on these things. Let me tell you, I say it with all humility. This man talking to you knows God. And I understand the anointing. But I know what will happen. A prophet sent his children. 
they were not captured in war hunger made him say see i'm a prophet but i'm about to die go to egypt go and look for corn you may never believe that one day you can send your child to go and do what should not be done until hunger comes when you hear listen let me tell you this when you when you hear that a family someone is collecting bribe just say lord help me oh For as long as there is an uncle paying that rent for you, it's all right. The day the uncle says, well, I've tried for you. You too, you have seen the faithfulness of God. I send you in the name of Jesus. And just when he's sending you, the landlord now says, please, this thing is 1.7. Or you go out. You will pray. You will fast. You will beg friends. And get to a point where you say, you know what? See, this life. And Satan will come. He came two years ago. You casted him. Nah, 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 I'm holy. He waits first. Satan is not a fool. He's many things but a fool. He will come at your point of pressure. Even Jesus. When Jesus was weary at Gethsemane, here he comes again. And Jesus said, is it possible that we negotiate salvation? But he said, no. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. So that our children will not be sent to Egypt to go and look for corn. For God's sake. No. His righteousness endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. By the grace of God, please, whatever price you have to pay, please do not miss the next session. I want to share with you a few systems of the kingdom. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, building on what our fathers have come to communicate here, if you pay attention to it, your life will completely turn around. It is true. Lagos is a good land. But for some of us, that testimony is not in our lives. People come into your city and eat of the bread of the earth. And we are domiciled here. No door opens, not even a window. Something is wrong. Is God speaking to us? The problem is not recession. Believe me when I tell you this. The problem is a thorough understanding of the systems of the kingdom. It will not just happen by saying, I know, no, 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 no. This conference was designed to make the next six months of your life surpass the last 10 years together. That, that, that you come to a place where you say, Pastor, and you cannot even talk. You just kneel down and say, Pastor, I want to talk, but I don't know where to start from. I have heard that God turns people's lives and I'm, I'm, I cannot un pastor so this is real they say what happened you say no pastor what didn't happen which one will I start with my children my wife my wealth my spiritual life your blessing monies that were locked up 10 years ago was released and everything and you just sit and God says now you are done give me time and you can say on Tuesday I'm locking myself this whole family will spend time worshiping God on Tuesday yes sir you will do it you already have the heart you just need the systems to be in place be magnified oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be You're going to pray one prayer and then I pray for you. And please just lend me five more minutes of your time, Pastor. I don't know how you are going to pray this prayer. But this is not a prayer that you just pray keeping quiet. You find whatever corner you can find. 
and be alone with God in this conference and say, Lord, things have to change. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.